can you hear me, Vance Fix? Can Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we yeah, can see. Hi, Vance. How are you? Oh, good. Sorry for the delay there. That's uh, okay. You could also share your screen. Do you see that? Okay. Uh, it, it's your. Uh, you have a page up. How does a SIBO VIX index work? All right. So, good. so first of all, thank you for being with us today, Vance. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, great to be on your your program. And uh, I know you specialize in volatility. Uh, how did your trading career begin? How did it start? So I started um, with stocks in the late 70s as I was uh, interested in uh, stock market and uh, read, read a couple books. So that's when I started trading. I moved into options trading uh, fairly soon after that once I had done uh, some work just with uh, various <clears throat> various stocks. I uh, became interested in the in the VIX in about 2005, and okay. uh, what I was looking for was a diversification strategy. And I think anybody that really watches the general equity market ha has seen that. Uh, you know, diversification works great until you really need it, and then when the market, you know, goes into a, a bear market or a heavy correction, then uh, a lot of the assets become correlated, and and it really drops more than you would really hope that uh, a diversification strategy was would do. Yeah, I and think, I noticed. I think, that, I think that realization took place twice, and that's why people wanted to learn how to become self-directed and make their own decisions because they tried conventional things like a mm -hmm. portion in equities, portion in bonds, mm -hmm. portion in gold, portion in cash, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, you know, fool me once, shame on mm -hmm. you, fool me twice, shame on me. I think that was really behind the big uh, macro move of people wanting to learn the markets and learn how to trade. Do you think yeah, that was no, it? I think that, I think that was a huge motivation. Uh, yeah. Seeing that the the classic uh, let your broker solve the problem sort of things uh, did not work. You mean let your salesman who <laughs> sold, yeah. let yeah, the exactly. salesman who who cold called you yeah. to open an account with him yeah. to mm -hmm. be in their products, not to trust them that much. Yeah, yeah, the person that makes money either way, yeah, that, yeah. that's the one you're working with. <laughs> Inherent conflict of interest. So, uh, all right, so you start studying the VIX. Uh, I'm trying to look, think back to 05, you know, probably had a couple of years of, um, you know, the VIX not doing a lot until right. we got mm -hmm. into the financial crisis. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it was actually uh, felt pretty similar to uh, late 2016 and 2017, where everybody was complaining about how, how VIX, how low the VIX was and, you know, is the VIX broken? Although there there clearly wasn't near as much interest at that point, but uh, yeah. it was it was a low volatility period. Yeah, is it broken? Yeah, I heard that about gold in 2000. It's uh -huh. an archaic relic. Uh, it's only good for like being a paperweight, and that's when gold was, you know, 200. Mm -hmm. So um, the VIX uh, wasn't broken, but some of the products were broken by the panic that we had in February. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you managed risk or exploited that situation. You know, it was an accident waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, people shorting, you know, uh, option riders and people just shorting the VIX, cleaning up, uh, cleaning up because in a way, some of these ECNs are like options. They have a lot of decay in them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So uh, do you think they're worse than options or similar, the decay levels and things like, you know, I've seen about 10 reverse splits and some of these things? Mm -hmm. Well, there's there's really two pieces to that. One is the long the long side of that. If if you're long uh, VXX or UVXY or T TVX, those are all um, single or double leveraged long volatility, and yeah. and those those are very much like options. The the two X leverage will decay about 80% a year, uh, to, just to give you kind of a feel for that. Um, a lot of misunderstanding there because people will look at stock charts and 
and say, well, you know, it, it's been way up there before and it's way down, so maybe it's due for a rebound. Uh, but what they, they don't understand is is that these products are being eroded away and will never get back to where they were. Right. So it, it's it's a matter of timing. If, if your timing is very good and you get into these uh, long vehicles at the right time, you can do really well. You can do 20%, 30% in a day. But any uh, if you hold it for a month or two, you're almost guaranteed to ha have lost money. Okay, that's an excellent thing for people to know, um, because and uh, I, I've done it, so uh, that's something important for people to know. Uh, you know, so then how do people uh, go about structuring a trade if they want to be long vol with uh, less decay and have it almost be an asset class for them, Lance? Lance. Well, that that is. Um, that's a difficult problem. Uh, the, the 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 people that are most successful at this, uh, they they what what they tend to do is they'll they'll have a long position. They'll look at the decay cost, and and then they're looking at um, sh uh, typically short vol positions that that provide income that offsets that decay factor. And the key factor with that is that you have to make those um, limited risk. You basically have to, you know, use an optionality sort of thing to say, well, I'm <clears throat> I'm short this product, but I I put uh, another option, so I limit my my losses if if the vol spike happens, and then I make it up big time on the long side. So so that's the only way I've seen where you get close to a flat, you know, position normally. Is if you're offsetting the, the the long side decay with short term income, and then limit the range on the short term, so that when the vol happens, that that you can uh, end up being profitable. Uh, what's your take on the price action in VIX here lately? Uh, it seems to me like you know, even though uh, a few of the indexes led by Russell and Nasdaq made new highs, that the VIX, if you can see my chart here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pants, it, it kind of, uh, even though it was uh, a lot of complacency in here, it was from a higher level of uh, the complacency here, mm -hmm. and it uh, looks to be coming out of here. Um, my teammate Steve pointed out some of the divergences we were getting, but um, do you think that every vol spike we've had, in my experience, has been something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. August 2014, it got mm -hmm. to 52. But mm -hmm. I want to go out here, but you know, we've never seen um, a sustained period. Uh, even if you go back to, except for 07, mm -hmm. where you know you had a little bit. There was a trend, a trend, although it, most of it happened in two months. Mm -hmm. And actually. You know, a lot of it happened before the equities did their final blow off, which is, uh, you know, the, you know, the yeah. really ugly part of that was in early 2009. But the VIX spike was was in it was decaying uh, during that period, even though the equities were in their final uh, capitulation phase. Yeah, and isn't that what was happening in February too uh, of this year? The market was making new highs, but the VIX was already turning. So uh, when you see markets making new highs with volatility not eroding or going lower, is that a market tell to you? Well, I think that first of all is, is I I view the volatility indexes as being another as a another look at the market. I don't view it as particularly predictive, uh, okay. but I think it gives you a mood. It certainly gives you a mood of a different part of the market. And in the case of February, <clears throat> um, the VIX had climbed up a little bit, but the the indicator that that I watch the most is the term structure of uh, both the VIX and the VIX futures. Oh, and so you so, look for a backwardation or a carrying? I uh, look for. Yeah. Well, it's actually normally if if things are going a bull market or sideways, they're in contango. So the further out you go in volatility, the higher the price. I and see. and so one of the things I look at is when the VIX, which is 30 days, uh, starts creeping up uh, relative to the 90 day, which is VIX 3M. And, and that indicator gave a very good tell in February. It doesn't always work great, but 
uh, it, it gave, uh, you know, that normally if things are, are quiet, that ratio will be in the point, uh, 0.8 to point 0.9 range. Mm -hmm. And the, it, right before, in February 2nd, it was above one. And so you asked earlier, you know, how do I manage this? And, and so basically I, I had two strategies going at that point with assets in, into each of those. One of those was completely out um, as of February 2nd because of this term structure indication. Okay. So, so that's one way to protect yourself. And, and I, frankly, I was shocked uh, given how red that indicator was flashing that, that more, more professionals weren't out. Uh, the other strategy that I use is on the inverse side, which I haven't talked about, which is kind of a different beast because it's more of an income producer. But you you're just like an care. option writer, right? Exactly. But you have to have a strategy for limiting. Uh, when the steamroller comes along, you need to figure out how can you um, survive that. Yeah, a lot and, of people blew up doing that. Uh, oh yeah, but, and in but, fact, that instrument blew up. Uh, the XIV did, uh, SVXY yeah. survived, but XIV yeah. blew up, yeah. And Why did it blow up? Well, actually Credit Suisse made a decision uh, to to terminate it, but there, uh, it was it was essentially uh, a liquidity, it was a liquidity crisis in the VIX futures. Is Things were actually, I think XIV and SVXY were only, they were down, they were down, they were like 20, down 20 or 30 percent, but kind of in line with the overall market action. It was, uh, you know, markets were down 5 percent, the S&P, yeah. so that was a big move. But what happened is that uh, both the 2X long and the minus one leverage, they have to do a, a rebalancing process at the end of every day. And and that actually, uh, at that point, was happening on, right when the VIX futures settled, which is about 4.15 uh, Eastern time. And so what happened, there was so much, uh, so many assets allocated to this and such a huge move is in a 30 minute or more like a 10 minute period, uh, both the long and the short funds had to go in and, and buy billions of dollars worth of VIX futures. And the, the other okay. side just wasn't there. Yeah. So uh, you have a, are you positioning yourself for a long vol play here, maybe into the summer, uh, into the fall? Uh, or do you think that what's happening this week is just uh, another head fake for lower volatility to come? Mm -hmm. Uh, my my posturing is that this is a head fake. Is that uh, my my sense is the macroeconomics are are still um, reasonably uh, positive, and there's a lot of noise with the trade war sort of activity. But uh, if if you look at most of the general market uh, macro sort of things, uh, you know the landscape feels pretty positive to me. Okay. But having, um, said, but having said that, uh, one, of the, one of the things I do do is if I have a uh, inverse position or short position is I also protect that position with out of the money puts. Okay, so you trade the VIX options too? Uh, actually, in this case, I use the SVXY options, but you can oh, also okay. use the and, – and the situation there is you basically have to say how much am I willing to take in a maximum drawdown. Uh, because uh -huh. if you if you're trying to limit yourself to a five percent loss, it's it's very expensive to do that. But if you go into the twenty percent range, then then they start getting to be pretty reasonable. Because the VIX options are very very liquid, a huge open interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never use them. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I think the main caveat I would give there is is yeah, the spreads are wide, so you know I th I think it's important to to do a limit what, like a nickel. And, a nickel on the oh no, they can liver. be they can be a lot wider than that. It, it wow. depends. So the yeah. and and I think I just I'm just shocked by how many people think they have to uh, put in their order at the bid or the or, or the offer. Uh, so my, you my, you tell people to split it, put it. Oh in the yes, middle? absolutely. Yeah, or or maybe give a little bit to the market maker, but start there because otherwise you're just giving you know them free money. 
Okay. So uh, is this your complete focus, and this is what you you're you're either short or long vowel with different strategies and. Um, I went to your blog. Do you offer any type of advisory service or do you teach people how to do this? What's your business model, Vance? So I, the the reason I started my blog was kind of a journaling, and I think just the discipline of writing this out was good for me. So I think that one of my goals is, is uh, these are complex products, and there's a lot of misunderstanding there. So so one of the things that I do is is just try to go into the space between the academic stuff, which is pretty inaccessible, and the tutorial stuff, which is, you know, oftentimes not deep enough. So my target audience are people that really want to understand how this stuff works and and kind of flesh out uh, the volatility space, which is quite complicated. You're you're talking yes. five levels of derivatives so by the time you you really get down to you know options on an inverse. Uh, that's based on VIX futures, which is based on the VIX, which is based on SPX options. So, you know, you, you go through a pretty long string, and a lot of people, uh, understandably, don't, don't uh, it's, it is not obvious. Yeah, so it's like the Rubik's Cube mm -hmm. of instruments. Mm -hmm. You could use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Vance, best way for people to stay in touch with you and follow you would be besides your Twitter handle, which I'll give out now, is the number six underscored figure underscore invest. Any other place for people to find you besides Twitter? No, I think uh, no, I think that's the best I, uh, best uh, vehicle for that. I you know clearly my blog is 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 there and leaving comments on uh, sixfigureinvesting.com is. Uh, you know, I also respond to that, or or email. My email is is on the listed on the blog. So, uh, okay. Well, I, I appreciate you taking time out of the day and uh, sharing your views and educating us and warning uh, our listeners about some of the landmines that you can step on and mm -hmm. definitely do your homework and due diligence before mm -hmm. you just jump in don't do it on a, uh, don't do it blind on someone's recommendation so if you want to learn about vix vance is the guy so uh thank you again vance great for, great to meet you and good luck with your strategies have a great summer trading season all right thanks a lot dale all right mm -hmm. that's vance how uh harwood everybody and that's a wrap for us today so VIX uh, trading 1840, we'll see if Vance is right. Um, with my outlook on NASDAQ, I would expect higher prices, but I've been wrong before. I don't know when I was wrong. Before I say goodbye to everyone, this is your um, trading session therapy. Okay, it's going to be cathartic. Everyone say it. I don't know. Okay, everyone, say it. I don't know. Print it. You'll feel better. Then take a deep breath. Now say, I was wrong. Inhale, deep breath. I was wrong. Now both of them together. I don't know, and I was wrong. Don't you feel that burden just lifting? <laughs> Good one, Zia. <laughs> oh, it sounds like I'm talking to my wife. Very good, Zia. Thank you for the laugh. Okay, humor, it's tonic to the soul. So everyone, have a great Thursday. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. Remember the sands, uh, the sand in the hourglass like the days of our lives are running out for you to lock in prices at Forex anal Analytics. I don't know, and I was wrong, not for the first time either. There you go, Ed. And then you follow it up with next. Don't dwell, okay? We did it. We said it. Next. There you go. So see you for the next session tomorrow, TGIF. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Everybody, yeah, no fetal positions allowed. 
for face warriors or you'll be drummed out of the tribe. So don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow. Thank you, investing.com, for live streaming our event today. See you, Martin. Adios, Ed. Thanks again, Vance.